sponsored by McCams, getting you back on two wheels when it wasn't your fault. Whenever we produce a naked bike review of any capacity, it's always KTM owners that seem to be the most loyal and passionate in terms of defending the brand and the bikes that they own. They're continually challenging me to make direct comparisons between the bike that I've just reviewed and the equivalent Duke from the KTM range, which is why we've gathered all of them here today to give an overview of all six. Everything from the tiny little 125 down there all the way up to the big daddies, the 1290 Super Duke R and GT. Dial up your imagination to off the scale and let's imagine for a second that I'm Goldilocks and these are my six bears. I just want to grab the key, poke this grizzly straight in the eye, but unfortunately the producer has said I need to start with baby bear all the way down there. No bad thing when they look as good as they do. Duke 125 has an A1 license friendly liquid cooled 125cc single. It makes 15 horsepower and 12 newton meters of torque, and overall the bike has a dry weight of 137 kilograms. 125 has Bosch ABS brakes, and it shares the same front end, that's forks and brakes, as the 390 Big Brother. Add 13.4 litres of fuel and spend £3,499, and you'll be buzzing around on possibly one of the best 125s money can currently buy. First ride of the day done, started on the nice and simple 125, smallest of the five bikes that I'm going to ride today. It's a, it's a playful little thing, that's what all 125s feel like to me because I've outgrown them in terms of my age and my size and, and the appeal that they have for me. But as a thing, just looking at it on its own, it's perfect. Unadjustable forks work perfectly with the bike, brakes are really good, probably the best feature on it. It's only 15 and a half horsepower, I think, something like that. So you do end up stretching the cable and just chucking gears at it. But that kind of forces you to carry that corner speed and do that thing that all newbie bikers should do on 125s, which is learn the art of carrying corner speed. I'm not very good at it. That's why I cheat and I prefer big power sports bikes. Switch gear not only looks and feels like all of the other bikes in the Duke range, but it looks and feels like quality stuff. It, it doesn't feel flimsy and plasticky. It's a close run thing for me when it comes to 125s between the, like the RC, the superbike style 125 that you could go for, and the ease and practicality of a, a naked upright bike like this Duke 125. I always use London as an excuse when I'm talking about everything else that I ride, and I think that would work in its favor. If I'm just riding every day in London, you don't need stacks of power. So the 125 would work, but I've got to be honest and say, you know, I'm a, a little bit too long in the tooth to get massively excited about 125s. I can definitely see the appeal in this, but uh, I want to ride the other stuff. KTM Duke 390 has a 370cc liquid-cooled single-cylinder motor much like the 125. Things start to get different almost straight away though. Power is up to 43 horsepower, torque to 37 newton meters. The dry weight is 149 kilos, 12 up on the 125, although both bikes share the same 13.4 litre sized fuel tank. There's a fair jump in price as well, 4749 for this 390 version, although the riding experience more than makes up for the increase in price. That is a properly cool little bike. I say little bike, I don't mean little in, in any negative way at all. It's, I think it's a little bit of a giant killer. It's like if Conor McGregor was a motorbike, this would be who he would be. It just flies. The little test route that I've devised involves about eight miles of dual carriageway. And what I want to try and give is an impression of just how hard or easy it is for these bikes to each get to 70 miles an hour. The 125 struggled for eight miles to do 70. This was doing over 70 before I even got to the end of the slip road. It's, is night and day away from where the 125 is in terms of power. I think the 125 and 390 share the same fork set and the same front brake. And where on the 125, I felt like I was getting quite a plush feeling from the front. On this, it felt almost the other way around. I think the forks are the weak point with this bike. I say weak, it, again, not in a negative way. This bike's really playful and zingy. And it's kind of, you know, when I was, um, in my early 20s, DRZ400 Supermotos were the 400s to have. That's how this bike feels. It's really, really good fun. I'm, I'm 
I'm bowled over by how much more I would want one of these compared to the R3 that we did the launch of a couple of months ago out in Spain. Granted, this has got a little bit more power. It's at 44 horsepower and it's 390cc or 400cc, however you want to look at it. But there's usable power, there's everyday power. This will do 100 miles an hour. Not easy peasy, but I'm, you know, I'm just over 14 stone. It'll do 100 miles an hour with my fat ass on it. So if you're a spotty little teenager and you're out there chasing the lanes, you're gonna be flying on this. Don't be surprised if those little kids that I talk about when I'm talking about 125 reviews end up stepping up to one of these and coming out and kicking your ass. This bike flies. KTM Duke 790 has a 799cc parallel twin. It makes 103 horsepower and 87 newton meters of torque. It weighs 168 kilos dry and has a fuel tank that's 14 liters in capacity. Price for the 790 is 8799. So, that is so far, the perfect Duke. I think, if you go back and watch my Multistrada 950 review, where I'm blabbering on about the 950 being the perfect balance of dynamism, handling, performance, character, all of those things. You could buy the 1260 Multi, but you should buy the 950 Multi. So far, this is the one that I'm saying is the most KTM-like and the most kind of Duke-like of all of them. It's got the perfect amount of everything. I love the step up in tech and the things that you've got to play with with regards rider modes and traction control, launch control over the 390. Uh, but there's also something else that this bike has that the 390 doesn't and that's much more drivability from 50 to 100 miles an hour. I didn't do 100 miles an hour anywhere at all, I promise. But it just goes about its business. Not, a, not in a boringly clinical way, but it's efficient. It's efficient, officer. It's so fast, runs a perfect line, brakes feel beautifully balanced with the suspension. I don't feel like I'm cramped up on it. Uh, you know, you could stick a screen on this and ride it to the south of France, and when you get there, you could just decimate froggies. It's a properly, properly quick back lane scratcher. The dual carriageway section was boring just because, like I say, where the 125 was struggling to do 70 over the entire stretch, and the 390 was doing 70 by the end of the slip road, this was doing 70 in second gear. You know, this is big boy stuff. This is a bike that will get you into lots of trouble with the law. It'll pop a wheelie. It will do more than you could ever ask of a bike on the road, I'm saying. It's such a cool thing. There's a tiny little crease in the fuel tank down here that, that, that pisses me off a little bit. I don't know if it's just because I'm wearing jeans, but you, that might bother you. It doesn't really detract from the overall experience. But so far, for me, 790, especially with that pipe and the downshifter. There's so much to say. The downshifter is, is pitch perfect. You know, there are so many factory fit quick shifter systems that feel a little bit pony, a little bit aftermarket and a, and a little bit ill thought out, just chucked on at the last minute. This isn't, this, is, this feels like a gearbox that's been designed just to work with a quick shifter. It's just perfectly in tune with everything that you want to do. You can balance the throttle, go down through the gears without worrying about the thing tying itself up in knots. I love this bike, it's very, very good. KTM Super Duke R has a 1301cc 75 degree V twin. It makes 174 horsepower and 141 newton meters of torque. It weighs 195 kilos dry and it has an 18 litre fuel tank. Price for the Super Duke R is 14799. Super Duke R is packed full of features, stability control, cornering ABS, multiple rider modes, including the ability to castrate the bike from 174 horsepower to just a lowly 130 in the rain. Shit, a horse. <laughs> that is fast. Do not pass go. Do not collect 200 pounds. Go direct to jail. That's a seriously, seriously angry piece of kit. Massively usable, way too much of everything. It's flipping perfect. It, I started off within about half a mile. I was like, ah, it's got way too much for the road. I just, I don't need any of this. I knew that I was right, saying what I was saying about the 790 
There's too much of everything going on here. Within about a quarter of a mile and a proper third gear wheelie, I was wondering just how bad it would be if I ended up being Big Mike from D-Wing's wife for a couple of months. You are going to get yourself into trouble on this bike with the law before you get yourself into trouble with the law of physics. There's loads going on with this. The rider system's looking after you. I think I had it in track mode. The traction control on level three, wheelie control turned off. So it's working with you, but boy oh boy, it just wants to go so fast. I'm at odds with it. I kind of, what I was saying about the 790 ring's true, but by the end of the ride, I'd, I want this. I, wanna, I want people to know how flipping stupid I must have been to put my money into one of these, because it's so good. You just wonder why you wouldn't want to own one. Practical me was wondering whether or not the, the GT version with the bigger tank and the chance to carry panniers detracts from the mental nature that this bike has got. I, I doubt that it's going to, which, which surprisingly for me now is giving me this indication that maybe the, the GT version of this big boy is the one to go for. But uh, everything that it does, it does as well as all of the others. There's that familiarity, the, the Duke family connection is all there. But this is that mad uncle. This is the one who comes around your house and smashes the shit out of everything when he's had a few beers and smokes in the toilet and just does whatever he likes. It is nuts. I, I think, if nothing else, this gives me an insight into the mind of Jeremy McWilliams. Remember all the videos that he did with these, riding it like a lunatic? The development and test rider for this bike. Jeremy McWilliams needs a pat on the back and a slap in the face because he's delivered something pretty special, but it's mental mental there's you know direct comparisons that i should make that ktm guys have challenged me to make and i get it now you know i'm riding s1000r and they're saying compare it directly to the super duke mt10 compare it directly to the super duke now they're not here but my recollection and notes that i've been through on those bikes plus the ride that i've just had equals pass me a super duke r key and a big orange jumpsuit straight away because I'm going straight to hell if I keep this bike for any more than the next five minutes. The range topping Super Duke GT shares the same motor as the Super Duke R. That's a 1301cc V-twin, pistons opposed at 75 degrees to each other. Unlike the Duke R though, there are slight changes to the valve train. There's titanium valves on the inlet side of the motor, and there's also an extra 500 RPM to play with. Power is up a tiny bit to 175 horsepower. Torque remains the same at 141 Newton meters. The weight of this bike is 209 kilos dry. It has a 23 liter fuel tank. The KTM Super Duke GT costs 16,799. Fix. That's an absolute scam. Putting a bigger screen that might slide up and down and a bigger tank and some panniers on a Super Duke R is basically like putting a hand grenade in a sock before you throw it. It, it. it might look like a sock, but there's still a hand grenade inside it. It's mental, this bike. It's, it's more refined than Super Duke car, but at the same time, that makes it more ridiculous to me. I just think the notion of a bike that has the cross-country capability of this, it's a proper GT machine, that mental flicker switch go absolutely bananas ability that, that the Super Duke R has makes this arguably a more appealing bike than the one that's supposed to be more mental than it. The throttle feeling on Super Duke R, it feels a little bit more synthetic and, and ride by wire than it does on this. There's a little bit more of a, a connection that I like the feel of. But in riding terms, the extras that you get with GT semi-active suspension, 23 litre tank, which gives an apparent range of 240 miles or something like that. You'll be a gibbering wreck within a quarter of that and you'll need to sit down. If you've got big motorway sections, which is why I just nipped over and did the dual carriageway thing like all of the others, you pull the screen up, you sit back, you put the cruise control on, you get comfortable. There's heated seat options on these bikes. It doesn't come as standard. It's got the lot. It's got that Larry, I'm not even Duke, Duke-ness isn't enough. It's got that Larry Super Duke R-ness that the mental 1290R has. And the things that they've added to this bike don't detract from that at all. It's just a scam, it's a trick. This is the bike that you can trick your wife into thinking you've grown up because you've grown out of sports bikes. Look, it's got panniers, it's such a grown-ups bike. That's a trick. KTM have tricked everyone. This bike is just as nuts as the other one. You can just take more of your stuff with you and go further wherever you want to go to be mental. I love it. I don't know if it's the best one for me. I need to sit down and, and think about them properly, but on the face of it, 
just having jumped straight off this after having ridden all of the others, same road, same day, same everything, 39 year old grown up me would buy this and have all my mates laugh at me for buying an old man's bike until you go for a ride. couple of days. If nothing else, it's not really an apology, but it's confirmation of the confidence of those of you out there that own KTMs and Dukes and Super Dukes in particular. Like I said in the intro about how, how passionate and, and strongly you feel that your bikes are as good as they are. I agree. A couple of days riding all of them has proven exactly the points that you're trying to make. 390 was a standout bike for me for the range and in terms of its competitors, again, it's, it's at that stage of horsepower and, and kind of playfulness where it feels like a big bike. It's doing everything for me that big bikes do. And you can get hold of it and zing the nuts off it and, and have some real fun. But I think there's a, the, the limitation of that bike is the suspension. So you may have noticed in all of the riding footage that we haven't ridden the 690. It, we, we lined it up yesterday and we said we had six bikes in the range and we've only ridden five. The 690 is a bike that we haven't ridden for a number of reasons. The first one is the sales figures. When this 790 came out, it absolutely stripped 690 sales. I think in the UK, I know in the UK because I've seen the numbers, last year KTM sold 600 790 KTM Dukes. They sold 30 690 Dukes. So not only does that mean that none of you are buying them, and, and ergo we shouldn't really look at it, but also that bike hasn't changed since Luke Bowler and I tested the standard version against the R a couple of years ago. So still a great bike and probably a bit of a secondhand bargain. 790, this is where things start to get interesting. This is the bike that I thought when I jumped off it that I'd, that I'd nailed it, that I'd absolutely boxed it off in saying it was like the multi 950, the best of the bunch in terms of middle of the road, everything, very good, very fast, just so good at everything. But then you get on the Super Duke 1290R and your world just gets flipped absolutely upside down. The big ones for me are probably where I'm gonna hang my hat. If you ask me to choose between 1290R and 1290 GT, I guess it would come down to my mood on the day. That GT is a seriously impressive piece of kit and the fact that you can stick panniers on it and it's got that much bigger tank and the adjustable screen and semi-active suspension and all of those rider modes is a real plus point for me. The character and naturistics of the bikes are fairly similar. That 1290R is just a rod. The Super Duke R, not the GT, it's ferociously angry, it's massively capable, it's loads of fun. This Duke range in particular feels like one that's evolving as its buyers and its customers are evolving. What they hope and what all manufacturers hope is that 17 year old Johnny gets his license, buys a 125 and 25 years later he treats himself and he buys the 1260, he buys the GT, he's been on every single one of them in between. That's, what, that's, that's the kind of golden ticket for any manufacturer. The great thing about this range is it's evolving as we look at it. There's a new Super Duke in our sites that's coming this year. These are bikes that are getting better and better every year, year on year, all this modern tech. I've had a fantastic time riding them. I could close my eyes now and the first one that I would touch would be the one that I'm happy riding home on. I say it every time, go for a test ride. Find out for yourself. KTM owners, thank you for pointing out such a brilliant range of bikes. Sponsored by McCams, getting you back on two wheels when it wasn't your fault.